Welcome everyone. The webinar will begin shortly and will be recorded. My name is Sarah Torian and I'll be working behind the scenes helping to produce this conversation. But before we get started, I'd just like to go over a few housekeeping tips. First, we'd love for you to introduce yourself. So please use the chat box at the bottom of the screen to share your name, city or state and your organization. Be sure when responding to select both panelists and attendees so that we know, all know who is here. All attendees are in listen only mode, but we encourage your engagement by posting questions in the Q&A box. We will dedicate the last portion of the conversation to respond to the questions. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be emailed to all who registered. We're also streaming the webinar on Facebook Live. All resources that you see shared through links in the chat will be compiled and shared in a follow-up email to all registrants. Material, materials are also accessible on CGLR's Community Learning for Impact and Improvement Platform, aka CLIP. We invite you to take a few seconds to create a free account if you haven't done so, so that you don't miss the material shared today. Lastly, we will be posting a brief screen on-screen evaluation during Q&A and highly encourage you to, to respond. This helps us with our commitment to continuous improvement. Joining me now is Jill Fioravante, a senior consultant with the Campaign for Grade Level Reading. Thank you and enjoy the webinar. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Happy New Year. I am Jill Fioravanti, a senior consultant with the Campaign for Grade Level Reading. And Camille and I, and I'll introduce all of our uh, panelists and our, my co-moderator in a minute, are thrilled to invite you to the first of four webinars in a, a series to really lift up the intersection of housing and education, um, and particularly the use of housing as a platform to support early school success and equitable learning recovery. Um, we have three other webinars in the series. This is our, our first one. Um, they're the third Wednesday of the month in February, March, and April. Um, and I just wanna do a quick highlight of uh, these sessions. I hope that um, you, you plan to come back and visit with us uh, over the next uh, Wednesdays that you see here and learn a little bit more about some other great work that's going on across the country on the intersection of housing and education. I uh, can go to the next slide. Um, this webinar series came about through a longstanding relationship between the Campaign for Grade Level Reading and the Council of Large Public Housing Authorities that dates back many years that really started or was um, solidified and, and made, I think, more visible through the Housing Is Summits. Um, the Housing Is Summit for 2022 is happening on May 18th and 19th, uh, hosted by CLAFA. Uh, we re really want to lift this up as a great opportunity to continue the learning on the intersection between housing, education, and health. Um, Camille and her team do an amazing job putting these summits together. Uh, early bird registration closes on January 28th, and you can see the website there. And I think Camille is going to put a little more in the chat about how to access uh, registration information for the summit. Uh, but this webinar series was designed in a way to lead up to the summit um, where we're going to be able to further look at the relationship between housing and education and collaboratively work with CLAFA as a, the campaign for grade level reading um, to promote and lift up this topic. So really glad to be able to work uh, alongside Camille and her team um, with this topic and, and in these series of conversations. You can go to the next slide. The other thing we want to uh, promote and make sure you all know about um, that also was part of the impetus for bringing together this webinar series is the 2022 All-America City Awards. Uh, this is the 73rd year of the All-America City Awards. More than 500 communities, large and small across the country, have been celebrated and recognized and lifted up for their amazing work um, in a variety of different ways to support civic engagement um, and collaboration across multiple partners um, within a community. I think my colleague Rebecca Trout is on the line from the National Civic League. She's been a tremendous uh, co-pilot in, in working uh, with the Campaign for Grade Level Reading, who this year has the good fortune to be able to co-host the All-America City Awards. The theme for the awards is housing as a platform to promote early school success and equitable learning recovery, which I think you can see ties in very well with uh, these webinars today and in the, in the three months that are coming up. Um, the application deadline for the All-America City Awards is March 1st, about six weeks away. You can download the application and learn more about the history of this award, where uh, which communities have received it, 
Um, there's frequently asked questions and a variety of other information on the website that's listed at the bottom of this slide. But really, really encourage anyone on this line uh, to look into this, to consider applying, um, to work collaboratively with your partners in your community, to have a chance to have your city or town or municipality or county um, have an opportunity to receive this kind of national recognition, particularly as you look to connect housing with other collaborative partnerships in your community to support um, what's been happening around learning loss and uh, equitable learning recovery and early school success in a variety of different areas of focus that you can learn more about in the application. You can go to the next slide. So let's jump into today. Um, I already mentioned briefly Camille Anol. She is a health, health policy manager with the Council of Large Public Housing Authorities. She will be co-moderating. Uh, you can wave, Camille. She will be co-moderating today with me. Um, I'm going to be turning it over in a minute to our panelists, but uh, towards the latter half of our hour, she'll pop back on and she'll be facilitating um, some questions and dialogue with our panelists and really encourage all of you to put questions in the Q&A. Um, she will be using that Q&A to help um, lift up some of your questions to, to ask our speakers. And so we really would like this to be as interactive as possible. I'm gonna go to the next slide. I am so, so thrilled to feature five speakers today and really wanna give the credit uh, to Jennifer Thomas Arthurs uh, with the Housing Authority of the City of LA. Jennifer has been our point person leader uh, over the course of the last uh, several months as we've been putting this webinar together. And so this distinguished panel is really due to her and her leadership and her team's leadership um, to be able to bring some amazing speakers to the table. So just wanna thank you, Jennifer. You'll have the floor in a minute to be able to go through um, your information and to introduce some of these uh, folks as well. So in addition to Jennifer, we have Virginia Alam Abrams uh, with Starry Inc. She's the Senior Vice President of Government Affairs and Strategic Advancement. We do have bios of all of our panelists that is gonna be posted in the chat um, that will be also sent to you after today. So you can learn more about everyone's backgrounds um, through that document. In addition to Virginia and Jennifer, we have uh, Don Comer, the Broadband and Digital Inclusion Coordinator with the City of Los Angeles. We have Joanna Favicon, the Senior Librarian of Children's Services with the Los Angeles Public Library, and Allison Towery, the Chief Academic Officer with Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, just truly, really impressive group of individuals that you're about to hear from. I also want to acknowledge Araceli Hernandez with the Housing Authority of the City of LA, who's going to be joining Jennifer in her presentation. And I would note that um, before I turn it over to Jennifer, the real impetus for bringing this group together was to look at ways that housing authorities can be addressing um, a whole child perspective and a whole family perspective around early school success and equitable learning recovery. And I think you can see by that by the diversity of perspectives among these five individuals that it takes many different partners, it takes many different people coming together to really uh, address uh, all of what kids and families most need in order to thrive and um, not only thrive, but also really um, make it through what has been a very difficult last two years. So I'm really, really excited to turn it over to Jennifer. She's gonna share more about the Housing Authority of the City of LA, what they've been doing and the partners they've been bringing together um, to support kids and families uh, in a very creative, innovative and exciting way. So I'll turn it over to Jennifer. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Greetings and Happy New Year, everyone. I'm really excited to uh, really present on our efforts for the grade level reading campaign. Uh, the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles, along with all the partners that we have on the panel today, uh, have been in this partnership for over a decade now. Uh, and we're really proud of, of where we are um, uh, today in, in, in this journey. Um, I'll start with our mission. Um, we recently restructured our organization um, and, and really committed to preserving, enhancing and expanding deeply affordable um, housing and improving the quality of life for uh, the residents that we serve. And it's basically uh, centered on three different pillars, people, place and pathways. Um, next slide, please, thank you. Uh, so the people section is the largest section of our 25 year vision plan. We implement these strategies over five year intervals. It's aligned with the mayor's housing plan. 
Um, and it's the largest because we recognize that folks are not moving out of public housing. They are actually getting stabilized through government assisted housing. So that's public housing and section eight. So we said we need to figure out ways to support our residents um, through various opportunities, um, not just resident uh, leadership, but also community health and wellness, public safety, families need to be safe. And then any partners that we partner with strategically needs to apply what's called a trauma-informed approach to the service delivery. And that's that's really the whole child approach, right? So really training our partners to address the needs of our families. Uh, Sue Popkin, who coined the term, the two generation approach, uh, you know, we just can't work with children. We also have to work with the entire family. Next slide. Place is our, um, our, our housing strategy, uh, recognizing that housing is the platform to stabilize families so that they can access all these other resources. Uh, what we found is, uh, you know, our families that are particularly housed in our public housing sites uh, tend to thrive uh, in a different kind of way than, say, our other families who are maybe, you know, more transient or uh, trying to get into permanent supportive housing out of bridge housing because they're homeless. Um, so we're starting to see a trend, particularly in Los Angeles, that a lot of our families who land in public housing now are formerly homeless. And it's a great grounding place to really think about, you know, how do we alleviate rent burden in our city uh, through the partnership with our mayor and other nonprofits throughout the city. And then Pathways uh, is really uplifting. Uh, yeah, that's the slide. Uh, Pathways is really uplifting the residents that we serve um, through resident leadership, uh, really thinking through uh, their thoughts around their health and wellness. Uh, we are a recipient, our housing authority is a recipient recipient of the National uh, Community Health Worker Demonstration Grant, where we have community ambassadors and digital ambassadors that are promoting broadband, telehealth, COVID-19 access to resources, as well as educational access to resources. Uh, and, and Allison, we'll, we'll touch upon that later on in our presentation. But it's really looking at not just how we support residents, but then what, what are the entities that we need to structure on our side as a housing authority to raise the capital to do these things. So that's all of our instrumentalities, establishing 501c3s to raise additional capital that we just would not ordinarily get as a regular public housing authority. Next slide, please. So on this slide, you'll see kind of our, our, our focus areas. So education, like I said previously, LEOSD has been a longstanding partner with us uh, over a decade now. We've worked with several superintendents uh, on data share agreements where we've been able to get information on our, our youth uh, and really create the connections between Head Starts. We've got four public house, 14 public housing sites of which we have 12 Head Starts co-located on those properties. Uh, really figuring out how we transition families out of Head Start into elementary school, really focusing on those K through second grade interventions so that families uh, are preparing their kids for that third grade reading test. Because we know that, you know, through K through second grade, you know, they're learning to read and then third grade on they're, they're reading to learn. So if we don't make those investments and those interventions early on, we, we really miss an opportunity when they get into the middle and high school years to really set them on a path to, to college and career. So uh, really focused on that um, extended learning. We've got a lot of adults that maybe did not go to college or um, didn't do well in high school that wanna, wanna up their skills. Um, we've got very strong regions in Los Angeles. Um, you know, our regional economy is very strong. So lots of blue collar jobs that are thriving that provide family sustaining wages. So through our uh, HACLA WorkSource Center, our Watts Los Angeles WorkSource Center, uh, we do have partnerships with other academic and educational partners through LAUSD, uh, LAUSD Navigators is what they're called, that really walks our families through the, the adult uh, high school component uh, where they get one-on-one -on -one support. And then just all of our partnerships with my, which my colleague Araceli will touch upon, but what we found, particularly in this pandemic, is that broadband access is the nucleus to it all. If families can't connect, 
they they are just lost and families need that support to 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 get those to get the access to those resources. So um, our partners will talk a little bit more about that in the presentation, but I will turn it over to Araceli to talk a little bit more about our strategic partnerships. Araceli. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Araceli Hernandez. I'm proud to work with Jennifer Thomas um, in the Strategic Initiatives Unit uh, with the Housing Authority. Um, just to recap some of the key points uh, that Jennifer shared, um, HACLA does take a whole person approach uh, with a focus on people, uh, place and pathways uh, strategies to ensure that residents uh, can thrive. Um, HACLA does leverage uh, strategic public and private partnerships, uh, which includes a network uh, with the city of Los Angeles, uh, the Los Angeles Unified School District, uh, Starry Internet, um, as well as uh, our public library uh, to bring much needed supports to children um, and their families in addressing school success and uh, equitable, equitable learning recovery. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here we have a visual slide of our annual book uh, distribution events. Um, the Book Rich Environments uh, collaboration um, had, has allowed us to distribute um, over 7,000 books um, this past year to public housing communities uh, with free uh, quality um, and diverse books to children um, and their families. Um, the visual timeline demonstrates um, a, a series of events that take place throughout the year um, at our housing sites where we distribute books um, in partnership with our service providers um, and also in partnership with the library to further engage families um, in the love of reading. And, um, and also connects them with ongoing uh, literacy activities and, and digital um, activities, um, again, in partnership with uh, the library, which uh, Joanna will be sharing more about uh, later in the presentation. Next slide, please. And uh, the Connect Home campaign um, has, has been great um, in helping us bridge the digital divide, um, specifically for HUD uh, assisted residents across the country and, um, and has been the driving force um, for the Housing Authority of, of LA. Um, in, in our commitment to enhance uh, digital equity and access to, um, to HACLA residents. Um, so in partnership with key stakeholders, um, we provided a number of digital devices, uh, which includes hotspots, tablets, and laptops to residents um, who lacked uh, some of these digital resources. Um, we also formed uh, the Digital Ambassador Program where we trained residents across um, our housing sites on digital literacy, um, and help them to access uh, you know, resources that are available online, critical resources for housing, for telehealth, um, you know, a number of resources um, that of course are essential, especially during the pandemic. And then um, of course we have our partnership with, um, with Starry, which has been amazing um, in helping us provide high-speed internet um, at our housing communities. Next slide, please. Um, so here is our Starry Internet um, partnership slide. Um, again, Starry has helped to bridge the digital divide at nine of our 14 public housing sites um, that were once um, viewed as, as digital deserts. So um, our collaboration with Starry has allowed us to enroll residents um, on the spot at our sites uh, through the Affordable Connectivity Program. And um, as of January, we have a 43% um, adoption rate across um, our sites with um, Nickerson Gardens being um, the site with uh, the highest adoption rate at 72%. Um, so we're very uh, thrilled um, to have this partnership with Starry again. Um, you know, we're, we're very excited that they are uh, open to coming out to our sites and, and you know, just making sure that they're uh, supporting our residents with enrollment. So just want to give a big shout out to uh, Virginia and her team. And, uh, and Virginia will be, um, from Starry, will be sharing a little bit more uh, about our collaboration uh, with Starry um, shortly today. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so addressing our computer labs. So HACLA does have uh, approximately 11 computer labs that are co-located um, at our public housing sites. Um, these are spaces for learning, for engagement, um, and they also serve as employment technology centers where residents um, can conduct job searching, they can submit applications. Um, it's also a, a place where students um, have participated in virtual learning and, um, and extended learning activities. Um, an assessment of our, com of our computer labs has demonstrated the need for, uh, for us to replace um, some of our outdated um, equipment um, that are no longer operating um, or don't have the proper software. Um, so we, we have been uh, very strategic in um, investing in our computer labs and uh, the need to remodel some of our spaces. 
Um, we're very proud to share that um, some of the direct investments into our computer labs have begun um, this year by the city of Los Angeles, um, as well as Starry and Microsoft at three of our sites. So we're uh, excited about these opportunities. We're um, hoping to secure additional funding um, throughout the year so that we can um, continue to invest in our computer labs, which are critical uh, for our residents to, to get connected to the internet and, and again, uh, support them in their job seeking efforts and their education efforts. Um, so again, looking forward to uh, sharing uh, future updates as, as, they, um, as they continue. And uh, I'll now pass it back to uh, my colleague, uh, Jennifer Thomas Arthurs. Thank you. Thank you, Araceli. Um, so this basically concludes our presentation. Um, I did want to uh, just turn it over to our grade level reading partnership. Like I said, this is a longstanding partnership that we've had for over a decade now. Uh, I remember when we kicked it off. Um, and the Los Angeles Library, along with the mayor's office and Don's uh, role uh, and LUSG really make up the, the heart of this partnership. Uh, and and I, I, I can't say it better than, than that. Um, I think the educational resources that are provided through the library and all the support from LUSD that we've gotten for our families is, is just something that we, we just, we, we couldn't do without obviously the support of the mayor's office really guiding us and, and really giving us feedback on what the goals of the region uh, are so that we could tap into that. So uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Joanna to share a little bit about some of the initiatives of the Los Angeles Public Library. Thank you, Jennifer. It's been a wonderful relationship being able to reach children and families um, through your locations. Um, we had a, such a strong um, relationship pre-pandemic. The library was involved in many of those book-rich environment activities and events. And like everyone, we had to figure out what does that mean and what does that look like in the virtual and digital space? How do we still support grade level reading? Um, the idea of kids having their choice of books of, to read, the excitement of finding something that they love, curiosity, fun, joy, and also curriculum support. All of those things that the library um, supports with our partnerships for children and families, we definitely had to pivot. So today I'm just going to go ahead and highlight the resources and programs that be, can be accessed remotely or digitally through our website, and that's lapl.org. There it is on the screen. So um, the first, um, this is our website. And then when you go to focus on kids and families, um, you can see some of the resources that we have. I just wanted to highlight the first big one was our student success library card. Now this is a um, partnership that with LAUSD that was established um, a few years before 2020, and we were able to lean on it quite heavily in these last few it, during the pandemic times. Um, and what the student success card is, is an automatically assigned library card for all students of LAUSD. Um, and with that, they were able to access all of our online resources. So they were able to get access to our applications that gave them um, access to ebooks, e-resources, e um, some of them. I know there's some librarians in here in, in this webinar. Um, we had access to Overdrive and Libby, but they also had access to movies, newspapers, books, um, music as well, and the ability to meet with any kinds of online tutors. So it was so crucial for, have, for them once you get connected and you had the devices that were provided by the school and the district to be able to get to the material that you needed for school. So that was the foundational approach to make sure that students and families had the resources that they wanted. But also after that, um, the engagement and the interaction is an important part too. And this was met by several of our programs that were online as well. So let me just move that. 
All right, our first program that we have to address the whole child was Get Ready for Kindergarten. And this is our school readiness initiative that we focus on children ages zero to five um, and program straight for their parents. We do have our next series starting out this week. Um, and these are very much research-based content to content where we take a look and address several of the strategies that um, the Center for Childhood Creativity have found that um, are very predictive of kids' success in school. Um, they want to make sure um, there were like three pillars that they were looking at, um, science and math activities, um, being able to promote talking and playing, and then the relationship with children's bodies and brains. Um, we talk about their executive function. Um, are they able to follow directions or um, the social interactions that they had? So we, we came up with the series to sort of support those skills through books and definitely direct interaction through the screens, through the Zoom room with children and their families. Um, so children got access to stories and books, while parents also, as the program goes on, get to be able to model any kind of the strategies that the facilitators in this series use. We also connect people to the ability to track books online, um, and we think and we know that reading is also um, a great indicator for success and having that support. So we allow families the ability to track um, a thousand books before kindergarten. And that is the goal. Other ways that we try to interact virtually through, um, through, through our online resources is we have a story time online that we offer through the library social media um, channels, our Facebook page and our YouTube page. And this is every Tuesday and every Thursday at 10 a.m. We have a live um, demonstration of some of the story times that families may miss going to um, when they were able to do so in person. So these are highly interactive ways of supporting early literacy, talking, singing, reading, writing, and playing. Um, people just tune in to our our social media pages at 10 a.m. Um, and that they're also able to interact now that more branches are open, they can go to any location and pick up a story time kit. Um, so an egg shaker, um, a scarf, um, a child sized crayon, so that they can best interact and sing and dance and move along with these story times. Um, but we do realize that even though with the connectivity, um, devices may be hard sometimes to connect or um, for families don't, that don't have access to devices or need other ways of um, connecting, we do have a show that we put on that promotes stories and books. Let me get that tab on. There it is. Um, that's available also on the um, library's YouTube page as well as our local PBS station, KLCS. Um, it's called Story Hackers, where we dive into a story and kind of take a look at all the different points of inspiration and fun and exploration um, and include science experiments. So we go through about four through five books um, in each episode. So again, patrons can access it through the library's YouTube page or um, our, our local um, public broadcasting channel. And then finally, our last one is Bright by Text is a partnership that we recently began with, with this organization. Um, and when you text LA Library to that number, um, all patrons, anyone who joins gets customized text and um, parental tip, parent tips um, sent straight to their phones to support them during this time. So back to their devices, but it's, it's just great to get little reminders that are customized to your child's age and what they're going through to help support families and parents all the time. Um, and um, these messages get sent directly to them. Um, if you're in the LA area, um, when you fill in the initial um, initial form, 
um, you also get information about your local library events too. So again, this is just the tip of the iceberg, but I just wanted to give you the highlights of how the library is supporting children and families through this time and beyond. Thank you, Joanna. And Joanna is very modest. I mean, she is truly boots on the ground. Pre-pandemic, -pre she's gone out with us, have done community engagement events with us. Um, you know, greeted our families that we sent over to the various libraries. Uh, she's passed out books with us. So we are just extremely grateful for your partnership, your longstanding partnership with us. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so at this time, I, I have the pleasure to introduce Don Comer. She's with the mayor's office. Um, we could not have really done any of this without the mayor's office support. Um, and really just, you know, pulling together a very diverse collaborative across the city, the county, brought in nonprofits, private entities to really organize what we're able to implement. So at this time, I'd like to just introduce John Comer to talk about the Get Connected campaign. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And hello, everyone. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me today. We are really excited about all of the efforts that have been happening across the city to make sure families stay connected. Um, I think it, the pandemic just really exacerbated the importance of being connected. There were many efforts happening across the city um, prior to March of 2020, but you know we're very grateful for how everyone jumped in to really make sure that families stay connected because as we realized there were needs not just from an education perspective, but from making sure that seniors don't feel lonely and isolated as we were all safer from home, for those who were trying to access jobs and remain um, aware of employment opportunities for businesses that needed to be connected, and as well as um, the workforce and healthcare. So we're really happy for the partnerships that have helped us keep the city moving and thriving during this time that has been very challenging. Um, one thing we're really excited about is that at the height of the pandemic, we launched the Get Connected Los Angeles.lacity.org site. And I'll just share my screen so that we can see the site uh, today and show what these resources are really about. So the site was um, launched to really help share information about no cost and low cost internet subscription options and digital literacy resources. We recognize that there were many who were not connected and would not be able to go online to find this site right away. So it's through partnerships like with the library and Department of Aging and Department of Disabilities and our Cities Channel 35, as well as HACLA to spread information about this resource through various communication distributions. Um, so, and we're also grateful to HACLA because without the digital ambassadors, you know, adoption is really key. So the fact that that program was launched was um, just really beneficial to everyone. So I'll share a little bit about the site. We wanted to make sure that Residents could sort or search for resources by their zip code. So also in partnership with um, the California Emergency, Emerging Technology Fund and everyone on, there's a tool that allows residents to look by zip code. And once you put in your zip code, there's a list that comes up of where you can either access devices, access digital literacy resources, um, access either hotspots or computers, training, um, also the emergency broadband benefit program, which we know now is the, affo the affordable care plan. We need to make some updates, but we wanted to make sure that residents understood how to access this program as it provided a discount for device as well as monthly discounts for connectivity. And then also with a strong partnership with the Mayor's Fund for Los Angeles and support from T-Mobile's Project 10 Million, we were able to distribute 18,000 Wi-Fi hotspots to eligible K through 12 students. And as you can imagine, reaching 18,000 students across the city um, is a huge task. So it's great partnerships with LAUSD, 
the library and over 30 nonprofits across the city that really helped us reach our students because this program focuses on students who may be experiencing homelessness, students with a disability, students who may be in foster care, or those who may be at risk of discontinuing their education due to lack of connectivity. So what we were also excited about with the library is that there was a, um, there was a hotline so students who may not, again, realizing that folks may not be on, online to access the program, we worked with the library to set up a hotline so that you could um, sign up and receive a device. And we would use a zip code as a way to have the device sent to the nearest library location. We recognize that many locations, um, nonprofit organizations may have been closed especially at the height of the pandemic, so not able to operate as a distribution center. So using the library as a hub and spoke model, in, in addition to many of the community-based organizations, helped us reach the students. So also on this site, um, there are other resources about programs with the library. One thing the library also has is a tech-to-go program um, where you can check out hotspots. They also have Cybernauts program to help with um, skills. So this is in addition to what HACLA is providing with the Digital Ambassador program. And as mentioned, many of our partners across the telecommunications industry um, part showed up and provided some low cost and no cost plans for residents. So we wanted to feature all of that information here on this site as well. So the, um, the website is getconnectedlosangeles.lacity.org. We continue to share more information on this site, but also what I'd like to share is that in addition to the work that's already um, been done with the city, there are other programs like RCycle LA, where our information technology agency in partnership with Council District 10 has a, had a program that we're looking to um, re-engage that also provided refurbished computers to families. So realizing that many families may not have a computer in the home, this is a way the city is also making sure we can provide devices. And in this year's justice budget with the mayor, he announced and allocated $17 million specifically for broadband and digital inclusion efforts. So part of that is creating additional Wi-Fi hotspot locations across the city. It also includes um, upgrading many of our computer labs as has been mentioned by Jennifer and Araceli, we know that upgrading the computer labs for our HACLA communities, as well as our recreation and park communities where many of our residents go is important. So we're excited that that funding will be able, some of that funding will be able to use for upgrading those labs. Um, it takes many across the city to really make sure that we're addressing access and many across the city to really understand that it's the adoption. We can provide the tools, but we have to make sure that we're equipping people to use the tools. So we want, we're, we want to make sure that the, uh, the adoption piece, the literacy piece, why to go online, how to go online in a safe manner, all of those things are covered by much of the literacy training. So thank you and Jennifer, I'll pass it back over to you. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. So as you can see, this, this is a big task. It's not easy and it requires cross-sectoral partnerships to make it happen way above and beyond what any one singular housing authority could do. So uh, like I said, we're extremely grateful for the mayor's office for pulling together this, this wide spread collaborative and, and really, really bringing us together and putting us in a room to really think through the strategies. Um, I always say that the pandemic was a blessing and a curse because uh, there was a, at one point we didn't have installation dollars uh, to really power up and uh, Starry through the pandemic and some of the, the additional funds, the COVID relief funds, uh, we were able to figure that out. So uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce Virginia Lam Abrams. Uh, she's the VP for Starry. Uh, we are incredibly grateful for their partnership. Uh, of course, we learned about Starry through 
uh, the HUD Connect Home campaign. Uh, they were already connected to the mayor's office. So it was just a good marriage uh, for us to really engage with them and partner with them in a very meaningful way. So uh, I'd just like to highlight uh, that we have exceeded their adoption rates in our residential facilities uh, for multifamily. I believe Shari's average is about 30% uh, adoption rates and we're about uh, 43%. I think at one site, Dickerson Gardens, which is our largest site, I believe the latest data was 72% adoption rate. So that's that's huge. And um, definitely want to thank Starry, not just for the installation, but also just, you know, their team is incredible. I mean, they, they, they have their own community outreach and engagement team that works side by side with us. And I, I don't want to steal the thunder. I'll, I'll turn it over. I'll turn it over to Virginia. Thank you, Jennifer, and um, and thank you for pulling together this in, incredible um, team of folks today to talk about um, this incredibly important issue. We have a saying here at Starry, um, the teamwork makes the dream work, and it is absolutely true, um, particularly when it comes to bringing connectivity to communities that we know have historically been underconnected and underserved um, by their local broadband providers. Um, just to give a little bit of context in terms of where Starry comes into the picture here, um, I run a digital equity program at our company called Starry Connect, and Starry Connect was launched in late 2018 to directly address a broadband gap that we had been seeing largely in our public and affordable housing communities in the markets that we serve. Um, and it was really a gap that a lot of people weren't talking about, especially pre-pandemic. Um, because it was not a gap around a lack of access, but it was really the affordability gap around broadband that was impacting these communities. And it really didn't come to the forefront until COVID came into play because a lot of our anchor institutions, our community institutions like libraries, community centers, even the local Starbucks or McDonald's were filling in the gaps for families that didn't have reliable, robust broadband access at home. So when COVID hit, and all of those places closed down, it really became so apparent how severe that digital divide was, um, particularly in our affordable housing communities. Um, our partnership with HACLA was really born of a great relationship that we had begun with the mayor's office. Um, and it really jumped into action in June, 2020, when we launched our first community, Marvista Gardens with HACLA, and, um, and committed to provide every family that signed up for our Starry Connect service with six months of free service to be able to get folks online, to keep kids in school, virtually learning, and to allow folks the ability to um, connect with friends and family, connect with doctors, and just connect with their community when really we were at a moment um, in our lives where we, were, we weren't allowed to connect with anyone. And so broadband really, broadband access and internet access really served as as that bridge for families. Um, we expanded that partnership in the fall and brought in um, Microsoft and their Airband initiative as a key partner to help us accelerate our deployment of Starry within the Hackla footprint. And um, as Jennifer pointed out, the partnership has really been a huge success and that is due in large part to um, really the team effort and the partnership and the collaboration between Starry and our teams on the ground, working with the community, working with the digital ambassadors, and really the commitment from HACLA and the mayor's office to be partners hand in hand to make sure that um, we weren't just building service to these communities, but we were really engaging with residents to make sure that folks could adopt the broadband, they could get the devices that they needed to go online, and then also have the digital education and literacy to be able to get the most out of that connection. Um, you know, we're two years into COVID, a little more than two years. I don't know, I've lost track, but broadband will continue and broadband access and affordable broadband access will continue to be so critical for families moving forward. Because now, even if students are not virtually learning from home and thank goodness they're back in the classroom, there's still so much of the educational process that is anchored in having online access, whether it's Google Classroom or access to other educational materials, that making sure that every single family has access to an affordable, reliable broadband connection at home and a device to go online is absolutely critical and fundamental to ensuring that our communities can take advantage of economic and educational opportunities 
um, ahead of them. And so we're proud and honored to be a part of this. Um, it is a core component of our company's mission to make sure that as we build our broadband networks across the country, that we are also including our public and affordable housing communities and making sure that everyone is moving forward together. So thank you. Thank you so much, Virginia. Those are very, very important statements and so true. Uh, one of the things that we recognized um, just in alignment with our city's goals, uh, we, we have an organization called the Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation, and they, they did a regional uh, impact study, and, and strategy seven is digital equity and inclusion. And it basically revealed that if families and, and children are not connected to um, internet access, reliable internet access, affordable internet access, uh, they're just going to miss out. They, they, they just will not thrive. And that's, that's a very key statistic for us um, to, to really hone in and, and really know that our broadband strategy and our adoption strategy, our digital literacy partnership with everyone on, it's very key uh, to, to really driving, driving these efforts. So uh, last but not least, I would be remiss to not acknowledge our longstanding partnership with uh, our Los Angeles Unified School District um, and their ongoing support for our children and families um, in public housing and beyond. Uh, they have been at our side from day one. Uh, <laughs> I think, you know, from back to Michelle King as superintendent, um, we've, we've, we've been hand in hand with the superintendent's office, really understanding the goals of the district and how we can translate that to our families. At the height of the pandemic, uh, they, they invited us to present at the school board to really explain some of the partnership efforts that we did to make sure that, you know, our families were essential workers, they had to work. Our gym providers quickly pivoted and provided learning pods for families. The principals at the school came out and met with those providers who were providing tutorial services and, and said, what, you know, what do you need? And rolled up their sleeves and, and were right there side by side by, with us. Uh, during this this very unprecedented time. So at, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Allison. I just want to thank her. Um, they are onboarding a new superintendent uh, very soon and trying to get kids back in school. And she carved out this time to be with us today. And we're, we're just very grateful. Allison. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And it's really a pleasure to be here today. I'm the Chief Academic Officer for Los Angeles Unified School District. And it's wonderful to see so many people from across the country here today, um, particularly because this is a great example of collective action, collective partnership, and how those relationships that are built uh, in a city it really, really uh, benefit those that are most in need and most deserving of our collective investment. Um, to Dr. Bevins in the chat, um, it really is a investment of time. And I think that you'll see from those on the screen today, uh, that meant monthly meetings, it meant biweekly meetings, it meant connecting our teams with one another so that, that this work could happen in collaboration uh, with one another. So that's been really exciting. And one of the reasons we've had this deep relationship with the city, with HACLA, with uh, providers like Starry and the district is because we believe that uh, housing is more than a shelter, right? It's a home and it represents emotional security. It represents joy. Uh, a home represents stability. It also develops trust in young people that they have some place to go to at the end of the day that's safe, that has um, people living in the space and working in the space that are going to support them in every aspect of their lives. So it is about the whole child. And um, I'll give you an example that one of our housing um, developments, Jordan Downs right now is undergoing an impressive transformation with modern uh, mixed use uh, rooms and facilities uh, with community spaces and uh, really being developed to be a place that you can return home to at the end of a work shift um, and really just breathe uh, and feel safe. And um, 
the community having a voice in, in that vision for what the, the housing facility will look like uh, with green spaces um, and how that's accessed is uh, really important and part of part of the larger the larger vision that we have. So this morning, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, as a school district from, from my perspective, how this partnership has been amazing. One for access, I think you heard a lot about that, the Chromebook access and the digital access has been critical. Uh, the advocacy together has also been critical uh, as that's been such a high need. Uh, second, secondly, success has been critical. In the schools, we've added additional reading teachers, additional tutoring uh, for extended learning, extended um, outreach to family with family engagement classes around literacy, because we know that students being able to read on grade level is critical to their future. There's correlations with graduating high school on time and to accessing post-secondary opportunities. And so the, we have specialized reading aids, in fact, and this um, connection with HACLA has been so important because the families that we support, and again, with that two-generational model in as a thought, it's not just about our students, it's about supporting their families and uh, surrounding our homes with print-rich environments and having those literacy uh, supports, as well as those mental health supports as well. Uh, and I want to just mark the data use agreement is critical. So for those of you listening across the country, um, anything that you can do to get a data use agreement with your district, I think that that can also help us um, really evaluate the, the efficacy of these types of um, partnerships, which we're currently doing uh, and would like to renew and really study the, the efforts that the results that these efforts are having. Um, and then finally, thirdly is equity. Uh, I think, as you heard from Don with the mayor's office, we also have a student to student uh, program where the city, the mayor's office is paying our students, employing our students to tutor their younger siblings during COVID. We have a citywide savings account as well uh, being hosted by the city for all of our students to have uh, an investment for their, for their post-secondary sa uh, savings. As you heard from Joanna, the tutoring through the library, all of our students have free library cards with no fees uh, due to our student success card and all of the, you know, the tutoring and everything that came along with that. And then a hack is, of course, where it happens. So uh, we're really, again, excited to have this. And I would just say um, that these are our students and families that are really most deserving and vulnerable. So having seamless inner organizational supports like we've explained today, uh, is really a great responsibility for all of uh, the leaders in the city, the civic leaders and the educational leaders. And it's really been an honor to work with the folks that you've seen on the screen and put our teams together. So whatever it takes, uh, we're excited to continue this. And thanks for having us today to be a part of this. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Allison. Jennifer, do you want to do some final thoughts? I know we're a little over time, so I just want to say thanks to everyone, and hopefully this information was helpful. Yes, I'm just going to echo that. This has been a, an amazing panel of experts um, who've really done a lot of work to make this partnership, these different partnerships work across um, the city. So I'm going to take just a question or two from the audience that we can fit in the last minute here. We had one question come in. What kind of student outcomes are you seeing in LA school district as a result of all these integrated services and supports? Um, Jennifer or Allison, do you want to chime in? Sure. I was, I mentioned, I touched on it briefly uh, in what I said, and I think that it's important that we have the data use agreements. Um, ours, we're, we're currently right now working on uh, renewing our data use agreement to be able to do that because what we want to do is be able to have a model that shows efficacy, that shows evidence that these kinds of collaborations really make a considerable um, difference in the trajectory of our students. And being able to do that can also help to bring in additional funding and additional resources to replicate and to expand these types of models. So we're really looking forward to that and uh, would encourage you to share with us also as you're listening, uh, if you have great examples of data use agreements and uh, and, studies that have been done in your areas. Thank you. Jennifer, anything to add before we move on to the next question? No, I think that sums it up. I, the only thing I would add to is that, you know, the relationships on the ground. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's our, our relationship with LUSG is at the top with the superintendent's office. 
all the way down to our gym providers and the principals. Um, it, I, that is so critical because sometimes their conversations only happen at the top, but it doesn't always trickle down. So that, that's one thing that I can attribute to the superintendent's office is, is they get that information to their local soups, down to their principals, down to their teachers. And that's, that's so important. Great, thank you. Um, just to note that we just launched a quick poll um, about your um, attendance and experience with this webinar. And um, as people are filling that out, we're gonna look at one more question. Um, Shelly asked what, that she would love to know more about the resources and funding dollars to make this all happen. Yeah, so back to our vision plan. So, um, you know, I'm a key advocate of all public housing authorities to really look at establishing instrumentalities. We have a separate 501c3 called Build Hope Inc. Uh, that raises capital for all these additional initiatives that we otherwise would not receive funding from HUD for. Uh, and it makes a difference because we have a level of flexibility. We are not an MTW agency. We're not a moving to work agency. So we don't have fungibility. Uh, but we, we are very committed to, to our redevelopment goals of transforming our public housing sites, our computer labs, and other capital improvements at our site so that the environment is conducive for uh, educational attainment, workforce development, and, and public safety and wellness. And the only way to do that is, is to really transform the environments. And as a traditional PHA, there's just not enough resources to do that. So just really think about the governance component. Uh, it's so critical. It, it really gives us a real seat at the table to pull these cross-sectoral partnerships together. I would just add to that as well mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, Jennifer's comments is that provides a lot of flexibility in working with private sector partners like an ISP like Starry because um, Jennifer and Hakla were able to move very quickly. We were able to get into the communities, deploy very quickly and really begin to engage with residents. And I think that that, um, particularly if you're working with private sector commercial partners is really important as well that they have a dedicated partner that has a clear path to execution and timelines. And that's really critical for um, the success of any partnership. Thank you. Thank you all for your comments. I'm going to turn it back over to Jill for some closing remarks. Um, thank you all very, very much. Before I go to my last set of slides, actually, it's okay, um, Sarah, for one sec. Would anyone like to say, I think we have maybe a minute for this, would anyone like to say any last thing that was on your mind that you couldn't say that you really just want to leave folks with? and particularly related to the role that housing can play in supporting the whole child, um, particularly around early school success and equitable learning recovery. Dawn, I'll just give it. a shout really, 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 really oh, quick. Um, when we started this journey with the grade level reading campaign uh, and, and sat down again with LUSD, uh, the, the former superintendent there uh, recommended this book, The Whole Brain Child. Um, and it's, it's really, it's a very short read, but there's, there's very key strategies. There's 12 strategies. In the back of the book, it gives a little summary. And we actually use this book to train our service providers, our gym providers, our boys and girls clubs, and all of our partners, our Head Starts. Uh, and it, it truly made a difference in terms of the investment that we were able to see and, and just their engagement with our families and the connection to the educational and academic resources that our families so need. So um, I, I can't, I mean, I, this book is, it's all jacked up now because I've read it so many times, but it was gold. Um, and I, I have to thank Superintendent Ramon Cortinez for <laughs> turning us on to this because we're housers. And it just, like I said, it gave very distinct and easy to, to use strategies um, that that I, I, I can still see it today. So um, Thank you. that's what I will leave everyone with. We'll put that, we'll put that in our post-meeting resources for sure. Don, were you gonna say one quick thing before I close out? Yes, I would I just like to emphasize the importance of the whole family. You know, when we want the children to learn, it's important to make sure that the parents, the grandparents, the uncles, the aunts, everyone can participate. So the adoption piece is really important. I think sometimes we take for granted the digital world that we're in, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of gaps with understanding. I mean, our devices are very powerful, but some people may have a, a phone and just use it for phone calls. 
you know, and not realizing the power of everything from education to healthcare to job access to financial literacy that is in the power of that phone. So I just want to commend everyone here for the partnerships and the strong push for adoption and literacy. Um, I'll have to get that book, Jennifer. I love it that it was used um, to really set the foundation and, and provide some structure, but it is a whole family um, and it's a whole approach inclusive. and understand Thank you. That's a great. Why don't, that's a great transition. Just to a couple last quick reminders, um, and I, we, I don't think any of us could have said it better. Don, thank you. Um, we really hope this has been stimulating, exciting, um, thought provoking for all of you um, as we get to the end of our slide deck. Want to remind you that we have three more of these coming up uh, next month, Wednesday, this, the 16th of February, March 16th, and April 29th really encourage you to come back and be be a return, a frequent flyer, as we like to say, to our uh, Housing as a Platform webinar series and Claflin grade level reading would love to have you. A quick little plug for uh, Tuesday's webinars, uh, GLR Learning Tuesday's webinars from the campaign that we'll send you more information on in our post-meeting uh, resources. We hope to see you in other webinar series we have. You can go to the next slide. And last couple quick reminders, Housing is Summit, please register. This is a really one of the best um, events that I've been to virtual or, uh, or in person or hybrid. It's, this is a really, really amazing conference. Really encourage people to register if you haven't already. And early bird registration is closing soon. And then lastly, really want to encourage all of you to apply for the All America City Awards. If you're on this call, you care about this topic, I can guarantee you, your community is going to be well positioned for a strong application to be an All America City. So hope to see all of you in future webinars to see you as part of the All America City applicant pool at the Housing Is Conference. And, um, and we hope this has been very stimulating and thought provoking for you. So thank you, Camille. Thank you to our amazing panel. This is tremendous. Jennifer, Big round of applause to you to pull everyone together. Um, and I really hope you stay so safe and healthy and all of you have a really good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.